Today we're gonna show you how to turn this pile of parts into this. And we're gonna show you guys how you can get one of these for free as well. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their IQ Link ecosystem. If you're tired of juggling multiple software applications to manage your PC peripherals and components, then look no further than IQ Link. IQ Link is easy to build with and makes it to where a clutter of cables and multitude of connector types is a thing of the past. All RGB components utilize a single uniform connector that seamlessly plugs into the next device, creating a streamlined chain of components. Corsair's RGB is also top tier, allowing you to illuminate your system and set up with breathtaking RGB lighting that is fully customizable through the IQ software. Each fan also includes their own temperature sensor, which allows you to take control of your PC's cooling like a pro. IQ Link allows you to optimize fan speeds and monitor temperatures for a superior computing experience. If you're interested in a more simplified process of system assembly, check out the links in the description down below to learn more about Corsair IQ Link. Now, let's get back to the video. So yes guys, this is going to be a step-by-step -step build guide where we're going to show you with some more advanced components how to actually put together an awesome looking gaming PC, but if you want a more beginner oriented build guide, I'm in the top right corner. So to kick off the build guide, we have the i5 13400F 10 core 16 threaded processor. This thing is amazing guys, and it does come with a stock cooler, but we got something special for you. This is that special cooler. This is a thermal right frozen note 240 white ARGB with that nice mirror effect. And these things are really cheap. And from our testing, they actually do a really good job at cooling these CPUs. And for the motherboard, we have an ASRock B760M Pro RS. And one of the reasons we went with this board, well, many reasons, honestly, is it's a really good bang for buck board. You get some RGB underglow. It has four RAM slots. It has two four pins for the CPU, so you can go pretty high end. And also, you guys kind of see we're going for a kind of white and silver color scheme and this board does a great job of doing that. Now for RAM, we did not want to go cheap guys. We wanted to get latest and greatest. We have Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5. This is two sticks at 6,000 megahertz. That is double your traditional DDR4 speed. It's also white RGB. This stuff is usually under $100 right now, which is a really good bang for buck. Now for the SSD, we have an NVMe from Team Group. This is the T-Force Cardia A440 one terabyte Gen 4 SSD. And yeah, this thing has some insane speeds of 7,000 and 6,900. That is some really high end Gen 4 speed. And for the graphics card, we have the Zotac Gaming RTX 3060 12 gig. Now, the main reason we went with this card is it matches our all white color scheme and people love Nvidia cards. There are other options you can go with, but for this build, we figured the 3060 would pair very well with that i5 and uh, yeah, 12 gigs of VRAM. We can stretch into 1440p gaming if we want to. And for the power supply, we have plenty of power here with this MSI Mag A650BN power supply, 80 plus bronze, 650 watts. You can probably get away with a 600 or even a 550 watt if you wanted to, but this is good for upgrades in the future and we're also going to make this thing look nice and clean with these sleeve cables this is something we haven't done before we haven't shown you guys how to set up sleeve cables and the ones we have here okay i'm just going to rip it we're just committing we're committing to the rip white sleeve cables nice asia horse white sleeve cables all you gotta do is comb these we'll show you guys how to do that and it'll make the build look 10 times better and speaking of the case that's going to match this color scheme we have this sama case which is the sama uh q5w argb it comes with the rgb fans up front one in the back and also plenty of room for our aio and um, yeah, it's a clean build with tempered glass and it's pretty uh, budget friendly for those looking to build a budget gaming PC. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is Jax is gonna show you guys how to set up the motherboard with the CPU, RAM and everything, get that cooler ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to sleeve some cables, install the power supply, and then we're gonna put everything together and make an awesome PC and see how it performs in the latest titles. Let's do it. We have our 13400F right here. We're gonna hold it by the edges and we're going to release our bracket. Don't worry about taking that little plastic piece out. We're gonna make sure that these notches all line up. There's also an arrow that you're gonna line up, which you can see right there. That little arrow right there, just make sure that lines up with the one in the CPU. And you're gonna kind of push in the corner and then boom. Now sometimes, you know, that wasn't satisfying. Sometimes these fly off, sometimes they don't, but we know that we're seated in there. That looks good. Let's go to the next step. All right, we're gonna install the RAM. We only have two sticks, but we have four on the board. So we're gonna do slot one and three, which are the ones that's gonna tell you. See how right there it says first. So we're gonna do those two. And the RAM will only go in one way, guys. You don't really have to worry about messing up this part. Line up that notch and let them click on their own. You don't need to seat the RAM yourself by putting up the hinges. It should just automatically close if you're putting enough force on it. Don't be scared to push on these. Let's go to the next step. Now this SSD is pretty fancy. It does come with a nice big heat sink, but this motherboard also comes with a heat sink and I'd rather keep it nice and stock. So we're gonna use the topmost slot because that is going to be the one with the most bandwidth. It's gonna run in gen four just like we want it to. So we're gonna take our two screws off. These are very tiny screws. You're gonna need a PH1 Phillips to take those off. We're gonna go ahead 
and peel our nice thermal pad off so that now we can make good contact. We're gonna take our NVMe, once again, really can go in one way. We're gonna line it up and it kind of goes in at an angle, which I'll show from a side shot here. See, just like that, kind of at an angle. And then you push down on it. Now, sometimes you're gonna screw in the NVMe. In this case, our M.2 heat sink is actually gonna hold it down. So what I like to do is just line it up really gently. You wanna make sure that your NVMe doesn't accidentally pop out or something, which I have seen happen. And I usually like to kind of get both of these in about halfway, just to make sure that we don't put too much pressure on one side and pop it out or break it. So really with these, finger tight. But all right, that's our NVMe. We got our RAM, we have our CPU, and this is basically almost a working PC, but now we gotta cool this CPU. So here's our thermal right cooler. Now keep in mind guys, any aftermarket cooler you buy that's not a stock AMD or Intel cooler is going to mount differently. It is very common for air coolers, liquid coolers to all have nothing in common with each other on mounting. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this, which is a fan splitter. I'm gonna plug this into the CP fan header because right here, we have a CP fan slash water pump. That's what WP stands for. So that's how we're gonna power the block, which is going to actually push radiator fluid through this pump. Now, most coolers actually don't come with fans pre-installed. Thermal right, they actually are all right. Thermal all right, you know, they come with stuff pre-installed, which is pretty cool. Now this cooler is kind of unique. If you're wondering where the pump is, it's actually this right here. Normally, you're not gonna have a pump on the tubes like this. It's gonna be on the block, sometimes on the back of the radiator. If you see like a little square there, that's your pump. But in this case, it's literally on the tubes. There's not a lot of coolers that do that. But nonetheless, it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna work pretty much the same. Make sure to peel that peel off that I just did, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys again because we've actually done this before. If you leave that on, it's not gonna make good contact. So peel that off, make that the first thing you do so you don't forget. I'm gonna go ahead and undo these twist ties. So guys, this is all of our mounting right here. Sometimes these coolers are gonna come with like two boxes of mounting, you never really know. But we're gonna be using all the 1700X stuff. So it looks like that's the only thing labeled 1700X. So we get all of these bags here. We're not gonna be using that, we're not gonna be using that. And I believe we're just gonna need these two. This would actually be for AMD right here. I can tell because of these latches. So put that off to the side, put these off to the side. These should be the only three that we need for this build. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this fitted up. It comes with some adhesive, so it'll stay on the back of the board. You really wanna do this step because at the off chance you ever need to work on this cooler and you go to uh, like, let's say, put the, you, you take the, the block off the cooler to replace the CPU and this back plate falls behind the motherboard. It really sucks. Isn't you gotta take like the whole board out a lot of the times? But basically I just adjusted all these to match that of 1700, which is the socket type. And this can actually go on two different ways. Pretty simple, it'll line up in the holes really well. And now you see how we have all of our screw holes or our studs um, through the top there. This part's actually pretty easy too. I, I do like this cooler design, it's pretty simple. There's actually an arrow, there's an arrow right here. So arrow here, arrow there, and then I believe that way. Slides into place and it should be kind of 90 degrees with the tubes. If you notice that like it's off to an angle, you probably didn't install it right. All right, so we're gonna take these spacers right here and these are basically, really all they do is just make sure that you don't over tighten the cooler because you do wanna have a lot of pressure on the CPU so you get good contact. So these are gonna go all the way down just like so. We're gonna take our thermal paste. We'll try to use this thermal right paste. And since this CPU is rectangular, not square, if it was square, I'd put a big gob in the middle but on these rectangular CPUs, I really prefer doing kind of like a long skinny line. I found that that's how you get really good thermal paste spread. And that's just my personal preference from building a crap ton of computers, but you can do it however you want at home. I'd just rather have more than less. We are gonna need to change these fans here in a minute, but first we're just gonna worry about getting the cooler mounted. I personally like to have the tubes on this side pretty much always, but you really could do it either way, but you'll see how, how clean the build's gonna turn out. It is a little extra work, but it's no big deal. All right, so I'm gonna hold it in place here, and then I'm gonna take my four thumb screws, like these guys here, and I'm just gonna put them on one at a time. Now don't tighten each one down one at a time, because then you're gonna have the, the cooler absolutely just pressing one corner of the CPU, which is not good. So we're just gonna kind of hand spin them a few times, just get them down to where they're a little bit, little bit snug. So now I'm gonna go through each corner, and this is gonna be a pH two. Pretty much all of these are always in pH two. And I'm not tightening each one down all the way. I'm basically just going through, you know, getting each one kind of 
a little bit more tight than before. Posing corners each time, guys. And it'll only let you tighten it so far, but even, I've never had a cooler that you really need to tighten super hard. Like you don't need to tighten it till the screws break off. Just get it, you know, nice and a little overhand tight. You really could just use your thumbs probably and get them pretty good, but I like them a little bit tighter than that personally. So now what we're gonna do, the way that we're gonna mount this cooler is it's gonna go top mounted. You could mount it on the front of the case like so, but I really prefer this. And I don't like that these cables right here, they're gonna stick out like a sore thumb in this build and they're literally gonna have to go like this across the fans. They'll probably get in the fans. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get all these cables out of the way. And I'm basically just gonna rotate the fans. They're already in the right configuration. We want these fans to be exhaust. Heat rises, our case is going to intake air from the front and a little bit from the bottom. The heat's gonna go up towards this cooler and then we want the cooler to blow all of the hot air out of the build through the top and then the back exhaust fan. So this build we're gonna have set up for basically two intake and three exhaust. All right, so we got everything on the board ready. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do this just for fun. This is a nice satisfying part. These nice mirror finish coolers get smudged really. Yeah, I like how the it kind of peeled up a little bit already. So there's a little bit of smudging. So I'm gonna take a microfiber, really gently try to clean this. Before I give this off to Matt to put in the build, this is just my preference to make it a little easier on him. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the water pump to the motherboard. So that'll plug in just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our fan headers to our CPU fan header. And that'll make sure that we can fully monitor the CPU fan speeds and they'll actually spin according to the heat of the CPU. But now Matt's basically just gonna take all this and we're gonna kind of neatly hide it behind the board once we get it in the case. Next thing we're gonna do is get the power supply ready. So let's go ahead and take the power supply out of the box. And what we're going to do is go ahead and prep the sleeve cables because doing it outside the case makes it a lot easier in all honesty. And you can figure out what cables you need first and start combing the cables, which we'll just show you guys the process for that. It's pretty straightforward. So this power supply is not fully modular, meaning it comes with all the cables already. So we're gonna have to do some cable management to hide some of the cables that we don't use, but we'll probably use most of the cables minus the Molex that's on there. Um, but what we're gonna do is get out our sleeve cables. Now, for this build, we're going to need the 24 pin. We're gonna need, uh, I believe, two eight pins for the GPU. And then we're also gonna need a single eight pin for the CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and these should come with all the cables we need. Normally they will come with at least two PCI eight pins. Um, you might have to get another kit if you go with another GPU. But 24 pin first. What I like to do, so you can tell which way to use the combs, which they do come in different colors. We have the clear, which is basically the ones I'm gonna go with because we're trying to go all white here, or the black ones if you wanna do like a black and white themed build. But these clear combs will allow you to basically keep these cables together so they look nice and clean. So we're gonna go over to our motherboard real quick and just see which way this cable goes in. So as you can tell with this clip, it does plug in like this. So you're going to want to take one of the 24 pin combs, these little combs right here. We're going to go ahead and make sure they go on this way. Now, the reason I check this is because sometimes you might install them backwards or um, another way where you don't actually see this side of the comb. This is the cleanest way to see it. So now that we know that it needs to go this way, we can take this out and start putting the combs on. So I'll try to find a good spot right here. The easiest way to do it is take two at a time and push them in. So two right there, and then we're going to take another two push them right there and so on and so forth. We're just gonna keep braiding these in to the combs. Sometimes they can get stuck. Make sure they don't overlap. That's the biggest thing why you wanna do two at a time. If they overlap, it won't look good at all. So we're gonna go ahead and push these through, push these through, through and push through. Now, what the comb does, you see how this is like a mess right here? Pull a comb down. Wow, look at that. It's nice and straight. The cables look really good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add about three of these onto this 24 pin. And then from there, we're gonna show you how to do it with the CPU power and the GPU power. But it's pretty straightforward. It's just the CPU power. The CPU power is the two four pins that do separate if you want them to, but we do need them together. So we'll slide those back together. So the CPU power, we're coming over here and do the same thing. We're gonna plug it up. Make sure we know which direction it's gonna go. So you're gonna open up a bag of combs, which I almost lost, but I didn't actually lose. And we're gonna grab this guy, the little little um, comb that fits for four across, because there's four across. And we're gonna go ahead and push the comb in. Now this part, again, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna show you how to do one for each one of them. So this right here, you had the one right there for the 24 pin. And then we're gonna pull the, one of the, that's a six pin, one of the eight pins. You can tell it's an eight pin because it has the six plus two we're gonna go ahead and push together. Now, I already know which way this needs to go, but I'll show you for demonstration purposes. We're gonna take our GPU out to make sure we plug it in the right way. 
We just wanna make sure it's the same thing as those. You want the combs to be on the right side. It's not like the end of the world if you do it the wrong way, but personally, if you're gonna go through all the effort of doing the cable combs and the sleeve cables and all that, you might as well do it the right way so it looks good. So here is our six plus two pin for PCI power. We're gonna make sure it's pinched together and then we're gonna use our graphics card to check which way it needs to go. Always just look wherever the clip is and match it with the clip right here. We don't really need to go through the effort of plugging it up. We know it's gonna go this way. So that means the combs need to go on the clip side. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we have another one of the uh, combs right here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put it on the clip side. Boop. Boop. And again, normally with the PCI power, I like to do at least three of them. Normally with all these, I like to do at least three. Uh, that's the safest way to make it look nice and clean. So we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of the combs on and then plug it up to the power supply. All right guys, we got the cables all combed and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and plug them up to the power supply real quick. Very simple, these are extensions. So you just take the 24 pin on the power supply and plug it into the extension and boom, there you go. 24 pin, good. We have CPU power. We need to find the CPU power. Look at that. That is the CPU power right there, ladies and gentlemen. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it. Boom, CPU power plugged in, good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our two PCI powers, which with this power supply, it only comes with one strand of PCI power connectors. So we have to use the little daisy chain off of it. With a 3060, that's perfectly fine. If you're using a really high-end GPU, you might run into some issues, but for this build, perfectly fine. Plug it in like so. And then we're gonna take the other one and plug it in like so. Look at that. We're all plugged up and ready to go. All those other cables, you won't need sleeves and they don't come with sleeves for them anyways. So you're out of luck. And we're gonna go ahead and put the power supply in the case. Now we have all the side panels off already. As you can tell, the glass is gone and the back panel is gone. Now that they're both gone, we'll easily be able to access this build and get it all put together. Take out the user manual, cause who needs a user manual? So here's our screws, our accessory kit, which actually you get silver screws and match this white case, which is a nice touch. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install the power supply and use those screws to do so. So we're gonna go ahead and wrangle this cable mess going on here. Wrangle up, partner. You gotta pull this out of the way first. All these extra uh, front panel headers, which we'll get to in a minute. And we're gonna go ahead and slide in the power supply like so. So as you can see from my point of view, I have no idea if the screw holes are lined up. Are they lined up, Jonah? Uh, yeah. Mostly. Mostly lined up. So you wanna make sure that they are lined up in the back and we're going to screw in the four screws all the way around the power supply. So I'm gonna come around to that side and do so. All right, so here is our accessory kit and we're gonna be using those screws right there. I'll let Jonah show you guys what they look like. Beautiful, he's got it. We're gonna take out four of these screws. We're gonna go ahead and screw in the back of the power supply. We're gonna go ahead and stick that on the screwdriver like so. And we're gonna make sure these holes are lined up, which for the most part, they are lined up. I was, I was actually pretty close. And we're gonna start with this screw right here. And we're gonna do that one, that one, and that one. All right, guys, got the screws in, good to go. Now the power supply is installed, the sleeve cables are good to go. We're gonna go ahead and get the motherboard installed in this case. Now this motherboard does come with a built-in IO shield, so we don't have to worry about that. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is lay down our case. We have a micro ATX form factor. We have enough room for all our activities here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, I gotta see what Jackson did over here. There's a lot of cables we gotta organize here. So make sure that these cables don't get pinched because you're gonna need to run these cables. So I would suggest I'm gonna do, lean it off the uh, desk a little bit, not too far, because you wanna just easily be able to drop those cables through these cutouts right here. And it'll allow you to easily be able to plug them in later. So we're gonna go ahead and fish these in like so where they're going to try to fall where they need to go. Maybe, okay, well, we're trying. A good way to do this as well is sit this off to the side and then you might still be able to pull all the cables you need through. It's okay if they go behind the board a little bit because, um, well, it, it's just fine. It, it's just fine. Got that all through and I'm not pinching any cables. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna twist this around so Jonah can see what's happening. We're gonna make sure the IO shield lines up properly, which it is a built-in IO shield, which saves on a lot of, well, stress. But look at that, boom. Once you push that in, there is a little screw right here. I'll show you which one it is. This riser right here, this specific riser is raised to the point where you can actually rest the motherboard in it and it will hold the motherboard in place where it needs to be. It's very convenient. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is screw in the motherboard. And then from there, we're going to run a power connector first because it, you might be thinking, why are you running a power connector? Well, it's gonna be really hard to plug in the CPU power connector when we get this AIO installed up top. So we're gonna go ahead and do that before uh, we do the rest of the cable. So just stay with me. It's gonna help you out in the long run. So we're gonna go to our screw box right here, our accessory box, and we're going to get out, we're gonna get out the motherboard screws, which you just realize they actually label them on the plastic. Wow, this, this is it. This is advanced, look, power supply screws and GPU screws. So we're gonna take these screws right here, the little uh, fine thread screws, and we're going to install the motherboard. All right, guys, we just screwed in the motherboard. We screwed in a screw here. There's two on the left side over there. We have one on the bottom. 
And then we have two up top, which might be kind of hard to see. Actually three up top, one in the top right corner, one in the middle by that little VRM heatsink, and then one on the far left side by the CPU power. So now that we got that all screwed in, we're gonna do an extra step that most people might overlook, and it is plugging in the CPU power ahead of time because this AIO cooler is going to fit up top right here. And when I say fit, it's gonna fit very snugly to the point where it's gonna be in pretty much impossible to plug in the CPU power after the fact. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the CPU power, take the CPU power, and we're going to run it through the top spot right here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to do this this way. This is gonna be, oh, oh goodness. Oh goodness, there's a lot going on here. All right, so we gotta try to keep some of these cables out of the way. Um, I did run a lot of the cables for the um, AIO through this top slot where the CPU power comes through, but we'll just move them out, to, out of the way. And we're gonna take this cable, the CPU power, and plug it into that ATX 12 V1 header on the motherboard, which is the CPU power. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I'll show you guys the end result once it's plugged in and plug it in. And we're gonna try to push it back as far as we can because again, the AIO is gonna be mounted up here and it's definitely gonna push down on this. So we're gonna show you the one downside of this budget case is this AIO takes a little bit of force to get in. It's not anything crazy, but it is a perfect fitment as Jackson would say. And we're gonna go ahead and take this thing and try to do exactly what I just said. Building a PC is doable by yourself, but this step is very, very helpful having another person. Yeah, a lot of you at home will probably be building a PC alone, but it always is good to get like a friend or family member to kind of help out. Because mm -hmm. yeah, what I can kind of do from here is kind of pull these cables back. So while Matt kind of gets that into place, I'm basically just pulling the cables through here to make sure that this build just looks really clean. We don't want any extra cables showing. Let's see if I can push this thing through. Okay, there we so go. it is a very tight fit. Can very you lower tight. the table a little bit? For what you? I'm gonna do while Matt kind of holds this in place is go ahead and try to get a couple screws in. Give me a little more. There we go. Oh, 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 he's sliding. Yeah, and this is like the kind of situation where like it might not be a bad idea to mount it up front. I know what it could fit up front. Um, if it's up top, it's just that RAM is cutting it close. And if the RAM was any taller, this would definitely not fit because that's exactly what we're hitting. But hey, we made it work twice now. And it does look really clean this way. It does look stupid clean. You got any cables showing? Clean. Are we good up there? I'm not seeing. So we have like this one cable right here that I'll kind of just tuck. This one will go right here, which is coming off the pump, which is right here in this AIO, which is a very interesting design. And yeah, Jackson's just gonna take the rest of the screws that did come with it, um, these right here, which we're gonna show you like real a, quick. Almost like a core stud power supply screw. Yep, and we're gonna screw in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws up top. You'll see all of them. There's two in the middle here and then one on the outside. Yep, in this case, we'll absolutely not fit a 360 or a two, I don't think it'll fit a 280. So. No, there's only two fans up front. Yeah, I, yeah it'd be pushing. I wouldn't it. bother. <laughs> Basically, follow this build guy if you wanna have no issues, buy everything we have in this video and it'll work. All right, and now we can, uh, there shouldn't really be anything else we need to do there, so we can go ahead and put that back on. And this thing's already looking really clean, but obviously, we have a few more things to plug in. We have some cable management to do, so let's keep pushing forwards. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is probably one of the harder steps, but if you just follow along, we promise it won't be too bad. We have two people here in this case. We got two cameras set up, plenty of light. That's something that you guys can do at home. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by giving Matt all of the things for the up top front panel of our case. So I think I'm gonna start off with probably arguably the most hardest thing, your front panel, which honestly, it's just a lot of memorization. So. I, that typically is gonna be on the left side of the board. I'm just gonna feed that through to Matt. All right, so we have the front panel right here, popped out on this side, Darshi blows. All right, so there's gonna be a diagram on screen to show you guys how to plug this in, but it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna take the hard drive LED first, and in the bottom left two pins, we're gonna plug that up. The hard drive LED is plugged in. We're gonna take the power LED, positive and negative. The positive will be on the top left. And then we're gonna take our power switch, which we don't have a reset switch because it's an LED switch. You can change the RGB. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in on the middle part, top two pins. <laughs> Best way to describe that. Right next to the power LED, if that's an easier way to explain it. And then from there, everything is good to go. That power switch will let, you, let us hit the power button, turn the power on, and then all the other ones are activity LEDs. So we're gonna kind of keep everything in order. We got USB 2, which is right by the front panel. And that's the one that's just missing one pin. Pretty straightforward, so we'll go right through there on that one. And USB 2 is one of these headers right here, this one or this one. So we're gonna take USB 2, make sure the missing pin lines up, plug it in, and boom, USB 2 is installed. So next up, we got HD audio, which is gonna be missing a pin that's kind of more towards the middle, and it's gonna say HD audio. Now this one, well, it's a fun one. I can't fit it because of the power supply right now. It is Yeah, this is a little bit of backtracking, but it's all good. We're just gonna remove the four power supply screws, and I'm basically 
going to just not remove the power supply, but just kind of push it back a little bit. Here we go, we're gonna take this, I'm gonna shove the power supply back a little bit, just like that. How about that? All right, so we got the HD audio now, and as Jackson puts that power supply back in, we're gonna plug in the HD audio to this header right here, the far left one. Make sure to line up the missing pin section. Push it in, and there you go. There's your HD audio nice and installed. So now we have our USB 3 header, which honestly, you really can't mistake this for anything else. It says USB 3, it's blue. I'm gonna go ahead and feed this. You could take the board out a little bit and get it through here, but I'm just gonna do this just to keep it nice and simple. So we're gonna take the USB 3 header. As you see, it just fed right through. We're gonna plug it into this header on the motherboard, USB 3, and make sure to line up the notch on the connector with the notch on the header. We're gonna go ahead and line it up. It's gonna click, push in, and then just tuck that cable back in. And the nice part is we're basically done with the whole entire top of the computer case. So now we're gonna start giving power to the board. We're gonna start off with the biggest connector in this whole build. This is the big 24 pin, which we have our nice cable extension on. So that means next up is going to be the 24 pin, which is the, one of the main powers for our motherboard. So we're gonna take the 24 pin and we're gonna feed it right through there. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the 24 pin. As yeah. you can see, the 24 pin power goes to this one slot right here that has 24 pins on it. You can count them if you want, but trust me, it's 24 pins. Go ahead and push that in. And from there, the 24 pin is good to go. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just kind of pre-run this cable through. Now you don't really need to do this. This is for our graphics card. It's uh, the two six plus two pins. And honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because it makes it a little easier on my end for cable management purposes. And I'm gonna go ahead and run them through right here. We're gonna pull them up through here, ah. make sure that the combs are coming out the right way like we planned, and they're ready to go for the GPU install process. And now I think uh, we really, all, the only other thing we actually need for this build is we're gonna plug in a SATA connector, which is gonna power our RGB. So first things first, I wanna get this stuff out of the way. So I'm just gonna kind of shove it in the, this is a hard drive cage right here, but hey, hard drives are ancient. So we like to use these for running our cables. Our SATA can really only plug in one way, just like that. So now I can take all this extra SATA and this, these Molex connectors, and I can basically just kind of shove them in this hard drive cage area. There we go. All right, so now I kind of have everything a little bit more manageable, and really that just leaves a couple more things to connect. So our, our RGB hub is good to go, but we did add some new ARGB, which is three pin. We added some new stuff. So we have, it looks like a total of three different connectors, one for the block and then two for the fans. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the longest cable we have here. These can only go in one way, luckily. Three pins a lot more simple than four pin once was. And these actually have like little daisy chain uh, capabilities coming off of them. If I can get, there we go. Yeah, sometimes you may need to add like some glue or tape onto these connectors so they don't come off on their own. But we're basically just gonna daisy chain these three together, just like this, because we only had one more ARGB header. So now, everything is basically plugged in, minus Matt needs to get the graphics card in, so let's go ahead and do that, and then once that's done, we just have cable management left. All right guys, we're gonna install our GPU next, and we're gonna be installing it in this utmost top slot, so we get the full bandwidth of our GPU. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do first is get our screwdriver out of our pockets and remove this cover on the back so we can actually install the GPU. We're gonna go ahead and screw, unscrew this and we're gonna slide it back. Just kind of put it out of the way so you can unscrew the brackets right here. Now, in this case, we have one bracket that is a, um, well, removable one, so you can actually unscrew it and screw it back in if you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and use our PH2 to unscrew that. There it goes, that was like really in there. So we're gonna get rid of this. And now this other one's a break off connector, which in more budget cases, uh, companies save money this way, I don't know how much, but regardless, we're gonna go ahead and push from the back first and we're going to push towards the inside of the case. Then we're gonna grab it and we're going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So we're gonna do a little wiggle there and boom, it's gone. So now we're gonna take our GPU and we're gonna take off this little protective coating thing right here that allows you to actually, well, install it into the slot. And one thing you gotta make sure to do is this lock right here, um, you wanna push it down, which allows you to install a GPU and then once you push it in, it's going to lock into place. So we're going to make sure that's in the down position. And we're going to go ahead and line it up. Hold on to your top of your case. But now that it's lined up, we're going to push in. And as you heard, it clicked in. Now we're going to take the one screw, the power switch screw that you just unscrewed, and use that to start installing or screwing in the GPU. So we're going to go up to the topmost slot we unscrewed that cover from and use this screw. And then we're going to grab another one, which you should have an extra, yes, from the uh, little box that we got. And then we're going to screw the bottom spot right here. 
Now our GPU is installed, we need to plug in the power connectors. So we're gonna go ahead and feed these power connectors back through. They're nice and snug together. And we're gonna start on the outside one. This GPU is a little weird because there's like a shroud around the power connectors. Normally it's not like that. So it, it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get it plugged in. So we're gonna make sure we line that up. Boom, one of those, good to go. So now we're gonna take the second connector, do the same thing, push it together and then we're going to clip it in. Now, all you have to do is take your combs and just kind of space them out evenly. Make sure it looks good. And from there, the power is connected. You can mess with it and do that if you want to during the cable management process to get it cleaner if you want to, just kind of tighten them together. But everything is plugged up. In theory, our system should just power on and work, but Jackson's gonna show you a little bit of cable management, and then we're gonna turn it on and um, see if we actually build the PC properly. All right, guys, we built the PC and Jax is gonna do the grand reveal. This is the best part, guys. We'll see if it actually works. Boop. Wow, look it at that. It turns on, wow. And yeah, we do have the RGB button hooked up to this little LED switch, but we're gonna leave it on RGB because it takes a minute to get there, but there is all these different modes. And of course, we gotta benchmark this thing, but make sure that you guys watch the end of this video to figure out how you could get this for free. Benchmark Titan. All right, guys, we're playing Apex Legends and we are currently at 1080p and uh, phew, going ultra with, um, why, why, you know. These are the default settings Apex gave us. It was, it was very it was very weird, I don't know. We're well, just we're gonna, gonna go high. We're gonna push this thing. Yeah, I think I think we can do it. We got a full size map too, so we're not, we're not messing around when it comes to this build. We're putting it to its limits. And this is the type of system where you kind of have the choice to start at 1080p, which I would do so you can get a higher fresh rate, but you could go 1440p too, honestly, yeah. many games. You have the 12 gigs of VRAM, especially in eSports titles, medium, high settings, you could get 100 FPS experience at 1440p with a 3060. And um, this is a good platform to start with as well because 3060, great GPU, but that 13400F does have more room for upgrades in the future as well. Oh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, I'll play chicken with you. I can tell you that. I know you ain't shooting at me, boy. You have a friend. He has a friend. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lordy, that's a lot. They're all there. I can't believe that actually hit that guy. Ow. Oh. oh, I got it. Dude, that guy stop. Is a laser. Stop. Oh god. Oh. 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 Oh, armor swap. <laughs> oh no. No, he did it. Oh wait, that was my bad armor. <laughs> Neither some <laughs> bad armor and the game is over. Yeah, buddy. Well guys, we got a dub under the belts in this PC. Absolutely amazing. Let's keep going. Next game. All right guys, well this is going to be my warm-up game in CS2 cuz there's like a three minutes left. But yeah, this is CS2. I'll show you guys the settings here in just a second when I inevitably die. Um, we are currently running high settings, 1080p, and we are currently getting uh, 200 plus <laughs> FPS experience. CS2, baby, that's what you get here. And this is gonna be my warm up game because, you know, ugh, warm it up. Because warm it up. And um, yeah, not too bad. Pretty decent experience. Obviously, CS2 is a pretty easy game to run, but we obviously got to be testing the games that are um, pretty high on the popularity list. And right now, CS2 is definitely up there. Even with, uh, you know, about a thousand dollar build, you could easily have a 240 hertz monitor that will keep up in any esports game, really. So you don't have to go out and spend two or three thousand dollars in your first build in order to be a little bit competitive. Oh. Um, 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 um. What map is this? I'm on this map. It's called like... Ancient. Oh, yes. It feels very ancient, don't it? Got him. Oh! Mm -mm -mm. Hey, what's up, buddy? Gotcha. Ooh, click and shoot. Oh. Okay, one more, one more. One more for the road. Oh! Ah! Oh, got him. Yeah. No. Oh, there's so many people everywhere. Ah, oh, duh. Oh, I didn't get, I didn't rank there. All right, let's go for another one. Let's get. Get going. The pain train one. Got him. Oh, oh he's be hopping. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, this would be perfect. <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't have swapped guns. <laughs> Why? No, no, I tried to be funny. No, treetop. 
Oh, uh, but yeah. Treetop. That, treetop. Yeah, Treetop is absolutely dominating me. But CS2 is running good, as expected, because it is a pretty easy game to run. But it's always good to show you guys how you don't need a crazy high-end PC to play games like CS2 at a higher pressure experience. Let's go ahead and run some built-in benchmarks to stress this thing to its limits and talk about how you have a chance to win one of these. So we appreciate all of you who made it to the end of this video. Now we gotta keep our promise and tell you how you can win this PC right here. If you guys go follow our Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros, this upcoming Friday the 13th, we're gonna be streaming for six hours, doing a bunch of awesome contests. And during that stream, you'll have a chance to win one of these awesome PCs. But as always, you can buy one as well from pcbros.tech. Let us know in the comment section down below what you think of this PC. If you guys enjoyed the build guide, also let us know down below. It's very awesome that we were able to build a bunch of these PCs to sell at PC Bros and also give one away to you guys. And for all the people that are watching after Friday the 13th, we do one of these every single month. Every second Friday of the month, we do a giveaway PC. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Now, once again, this is possible because of PCBros.tech, which is our PC selling company. So if you guys want more chances to win PCs or you just want to help support us by buying things like merch and build mats, make sure you go check us out. PCBros.tech, use code ToastyBros2 and check out to save 2% on your purchase of maybe one of these PCs or any other PC we have on the website. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace.